welcome to the next episode of the Black Brewers Podcast. We are so happy to be here doing this thing again. I'm going to jump it right over the field. Yes, sir. We are coming from directly into your pint glass from Minneapolis, Minnesota. This episode is sponsored by your local brewery and liquor store. Come on. This could be your ad time. Get up in that. <laughs> Mix in the pie. Dance in the curry. Yes. Come with us. It should be fun. Hell yeah. We're going we're gonna to kick off this week's uh, weekly review with Dangerous Man's. That's right. Dangerous Man Brewing out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Ah. Their Peach Apricot Imperial Goza. Very good. Sits at about 8.5%. Not quite as sour as most Gozas, but but I like it. I enjoy it a lot. This is actually my my second favorite beer that we currently have on tap right now. How do you, how do you guys feel about it? So that? this is my first time tasting it, and it's amazing. Uh, most times Gozas are a little more salty, a little more more tart. This has a lot of sweetness to it that balances that out. So I, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, with this uh, Goza, it goes. However, when I taste it, uh, I just get a very huge color splash of just orange deep goodness. It's like I'm diving into a pool full of citric fruits, but also you get that apricot to kind of keep things down and reel it in from oh, yeah. being too acidic. So what you get is just this beautiful orange rainbow of flavor burst mania. It's crazy. It's like jelly bean nuts, but it's also like a delicious mimosa nuts. on a Sunday morning that you just want to keep sipping on. It definitely has that mimosa like. feel. Definitely. Def oh, yes. Mimosa oh, yes. feel. If you like mimosas, day. this is something for you. you oh, sir, mimosa. And I like the balance of it. It's very, very balanced. So it's yeah, and it good. doesn't taste too boozy for like a nine or eight yeah. and a half, nine percent beer. Like I'm not sitting here drinking it like feeling the heat. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's definitely one or more of these will come up and slap you in the back of the head real quick. So be a little careful. <laughs> take, it, take it lightly. Take it lightly now. Yeah, don't, don't get knocked <laughs> upside the head. Okay. What we got next, Greg? Next we got the Blue Cran Crabber uh, Cran, uh, Cobbler. Ugh, excuse me, Blue Cran Cobbler Ale. Chee. Also from Dangerous Man Brewing, that's uh, the one that, if you caught our episode last week, Phil <laughs> forgot to bring it, but had an excellent description, but I guess we'll, we'll do it all over for y'all. Redemption. Basically, what this Blue Crayon Cobbler is doing is something real special. As you see, it's an azure, deep goodness of flavor altitude, so what it gives you is puts you high, but it sends you deep and it sits with you, but also it doesn't keep you on a situation of precipice where you feel like you're gonna get two slaps with it because it's got a nice low, about 6%, 5.8. We right on the cusp of a six. So it's a very balanced situation. I would say that uh, the cran notes kind of come in secondary to the blueberry. The blueberry is a darker half of the first of the uh, first part of the beer, and the, the cranberry leads in next. And then that cobbler just sends it off at the end with a nice crustaceous type situation going. It's quite nice. It's very balanced, and it's like a pie in your mouth doing dances. It's nuts. It's doing the Dougie, and I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is. It's, it's like you said, man. You get that cran right there. It, it, it's just floral, it's fragrant, it's beautiful. It's I beautiful. will say it, there is a little bit of lactose in that, and so if you're lactose intolerant, might not be for you. True. Sits under 6%, so very drinkable and uh, perfect for the holidays, man. This is one that you should definitely have in your fridge come Christmas for sure. Stop Slide that down. dangerous, man. Pick up one of both, one or both. I mean, support your local breweries. I mean, and then third, last but not least, we got the uh, Damn It Janet. It's a little play off of uh, the Rocky Horror Picture show, it's a uh, cherry jalapeno lager with a little spice of lime in there as well. Very good. Um, I get some jalapeno off the nose. I get a lot of jalapeno off the initial flavor, but you don't get any of that spice associated with peppered beers, and so I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. This is I my first like time it. tasting it. I mean, the note is jalapeno right off the top. Yes, sir. Then you get the cherry, but um, let, me, let me taste this thing. Ooh. Ah, yeah. Nice and tart, and the cherry. The jalapeno's <laughs> there, but it's subtle. It's another great balanced beer. I'm not, and I'm not one who likes jalapenos and stuff, you know, ulcers and all that. But this one I can drink. Yeah, this ulcer friendly beer here really uh, brings some cherry to your mouth. Because you get straight up to, for me, I get off rip just jalapeno flavor. Like cut up jalapenos, saute, throw it in a dish type situation. But. The spice is kind of held to a very, it's really not there, especially for me. I'm a spicy food guy, ulcer free. However, <laughs> I do find the, the cherry kind of comes in and sweetens it up to bring an upswing to the tick of the flavor. 
while also keeping that good lager base. So it's yeah. almost like it's a magnifying glass or, 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 or I can see right, the lager is the glass and what I'm focusing on is the jalapeno and the cherry. It's a, it's a nice view and I'm here for it. I wanna keep looking at it. Definitely. Listen, man, I love this man's language on the beer descriptions. <laughs> it just, you know, it tickles slang-ish. me all the time. Like, I see the flavors, sir. Yeah. I see the flavors. So um, we're gonna talk about a little dip hopping today. Dip hopping. Yeah, I'm man. unfamiliar, so what I, kind of I this is gonna be stuff a, is that, man? This is so, gonna be an education for so me. So I'm gonna read, you know, I'm just gonna Definitely go over about the little definition of dip hopping. Dip hopping means the addition of hop after wort cooling before the start of fermentation. With this hopping technology, they found the following results. Hop enzymes do not contribute to main formation, fermentation, excuse me. Mycene levels in the finished beers are very low, which has found favorable in this case. So it's just a, it's just a new way of, uh, not a new way, but it's just a way of hopping the beer pre-boil, pre-wort. Gotcha. You've seen them all out there, double dry hops, all these different things you right. see out there. So it's, it's, it's a pretty cool process. Well, and like last week, uh, the beer that you brought from Arbiter. The Collider. Was, that used yep. this process. Okay. Yep. It was gotcha. a double dry hop. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Double yep. dry hop. Mm-hmm. Double dip dry hop. Dipped hop. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yep. Gotcha. Hazy. Word. What do you, what do you, what's your take on uh, the dipped hops? I want to see a beer that you've told me is dipped hopped and a versus a beer that hasn't been dipped hopped. Maybe we and I want to see what the dip is doing. Okay? <laughs> That's really what I would like to see. Okay. I want to see no dip. And I want to see post dip, dip. And I want to see <laughs> what the dip can do and the difference between the dips. Okay. You see, you see what I'm saying? Next definitely, week we'll get one of those. So, yeah, you know, we could do that next. Compare we'll and contrast. I really want to get sure. a good visualization of what's going on here, so I really know. I think that's a great thing to do. Yeah. Great yeah. experience. There could be some dear beers you've had that have been dip hopped. However, you might not know that. True. And I think we all deserve to kind of have a really true comparison, just to, so we can understand and kind of pick apart what exactly makes it and what are the differences between and what shows uh, dip hop between non-dip. Dip, dip? Dip, dip. <laughs> lip. Mm-hmm, dip. All right now. Greg, let's talk about these seasonal beers, man. Man, right now, obviously, up here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, it's cold. It's already cold. Burr. We, uh, we're no longer drinking many sours. We're no longer drinking many light beers. We're on to Stouts, porters, brown ales, ambers, things of that such. Imperial stouts. Baltic um, porters. Exactly, yeah, barrel aged stuff, all that. Yeah. Um, right now, one of my favorites is definitely Castle Danger's uh, Gentleman George. I don't know if they do it anymore, but that's their barrel age. But then the, the base beer is the George Hunter Stout. That beer mm. is great. Yeah. Excellent. Mm. I would definitely highly recommend it. If you live in the Twin Cities Metro, you can definitely find it. At your local liquor store, Definitely. come uh, come winter. Man, I just had we were uh, placed a little earlier. We had that free house. That, was it the milk stout? Uh, it, it I don't know if it was the milk stout. It was definitely a stout. I think it was the number four. Yeah, stout, number four. Number, number four, four stout. stout from Free House. Yeah, oh, so amazing, very good. creamy, very well textured and balanced. Almost felt nitro. Almost. Almost. Yeah. Almost yeah. felt nitro. Yeah, that's a special beginning. thing. We can mimic yeah. that oh, nitro man. without the nitro, man. Yeah, man, that's a whole different thing. But I'm. I'm a stout porter guy, period. I drink it all season. I don't just wait for winter. I drink them things all year round. Oh, yeah, you, drink a, you can drink a stout in the, in oh, the summer? Oh, my God, yeah. I love the dark. Love yeah. Love Speaking of non-seasonal drinking, man, I'm still sipping on and dreaming about that Arbiter beer. Which one? Oh, the Pilsner, man. It just does it for me. It's like a handful of pills to get me right to keep it tight, okay? With the Pilsner, it's just crisp. It's light. It's like it it's uplifts me right on the bottom to keep me on my tippy toes right now, while I man. flow through. You might not be doing the pills, but I'm doing the pills because okay. I know it's, it's what <laughs> I need. You know what I mean? After a nice gym session of taking care Definitely. of myself, I'm going to slide over to Arbiter Brewery and just sip on a nice good Arbiter pills, okay? It's just, it does what it does for me all well, year round, we even like in to, the summer and the winter. We like to call it beer flavor beer. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a it, am I right though? I mean, it's a classic. That's yeah. classic. Yeah. When you Pilsner, think of a yeah. Pilsner, classic, you taste classic. it, it's like, okay, that's exactly yeah. what a Pilsner is. It's, it's phenomenal. It's exactly what it should classic be. Classic beer style for sure. Yep, yep. It'll sway any Coors Light, Miller drink, man. Yeah. It'll get them yeah. over here. Definitely. Definitely. It'll just kind of like, branch out, people. Come Try on, different come, things. Come on over here, see what we got. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to have a conversation about uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, gentlemen. Oh man, that guy. I know. Oh gosh. So what did you guys, I'm, I'm sure you all boy. know he got off. He got acquitted of all charges. I just want to know y'all opinions on it, man. 
I feel like the spirit of Johnny Cochran was in that because the way that man got off with clear and blatant murder with cameras, I find it, I'm flabbergasted. But then again, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not like, what are you gonna do? 70 year old white kid with a little baby face man crying? What you, come on. And the jury, the judge was off on some sus shit. I will say the, the, the prosecution didn't do any favors out here. Um, you got people on the prosecution basically acting as if they're for the defense from what it seems yeah and then of course you had the judge and then you had weird things with the jury going on but my main focus and my main takeaway from that is the prosecution and it, it it's shitty that that's the way our justice system works but that's how it goes if you don't come prepared to go to trial then you're probably gonna lose whether you're right or wrong Damn. so once again, it's just a, a travesty, an injustice. Uh, I think most of us in our community kind of probably expected it. It's just because it's happened so many times. And, and you have that, that feeling like, I hope he don't get off, but I'm bracing myself if he do get off. I think we can all agree on that. That's mm -hmm. how we feel. I mean, it, it also sets a precedent, too. It's like, so can anybody just show up to a protest, protest. now with, with, with weapons and then crossing state show lines. Up. Yeah, and just show <laughs> up and then as soon as, you know, maybe maybe you're gonna show up and then maybe you're antagonizing things and then next thing you know, somebody gets upset at your antagonizing. With and a then, big old gun. Right, and AR. then and then if somebody comes towards you or somebody gets aggressive towards you, does that give you the right to, to blast then yeah. shoot and kill this person? The precedent is wild sad. because, I, and we're gonna see in the future like how that how that plays out. Cause, well, it was funny because you know. I'm I remember uh, listening to a few recounts of the incident, and the kid was kind of all over the place. He yeah. was he was holding around he was holding around the blicky. He was walking around, shouting about trying to do whatever he thought he was doing, talking about uh, his first aid at one point. Yeah. But then you, you do the complete antithesis of what first aid is supposed to mend. So right. I find that quite uh, perplexing. And it was on camera, so I mean, you know, it's even a camera can't save you, can't can't get you convicted. But at least as a white seventeen-year-old kid, that's the case. But it seems to me we get on camera, it's a it's a death sentence. They throw you away. I mean, that's kind of what they do. But. Speaking of which, what did you guys think about the Ahmad Aubrey case? Just to give you a heads up, if you didn't know, I'm sure we all do. All three were found guilty. Thank God. Uh, that case was wild too. The judge was on some BS, talking about no, no reverence in the case. The, the jury was rigged, in my opinion. You know, they say a jury appears, but only one black person was on the <laughs> jury. This man was on. What state was he in? Uh, I think he was in Georgia. Georgia. That's a yeah, lot I'm of black sure people was, in Georgia. I'm pretty for sure the he was in Georgia. One black I don't know what city. I don't know what city he was in. He definitely was not in Atlanta. No. Um, I don't know what city he was in. I have to double check, but yeah, he 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 was in Georgia. What did okay. you think of it? I found it. The way I put it is, it's either you let Kyle Rittenhouse out off, or you make sure these guys in Ahmad Arbery get convicted. Because if they went ahead and did the two piece, like they probably wanted to do, this country would be in a different position. They understood that, so I feel they kind of. It's almost like a throw bone thrown. Retribution like it should be, but not truly because it doesn't bring that man back. Right. It doesn't mend that family's searing pain that they experience from this man. Once again, taking care of himself. He's going for a He's job. For a jog. Yeah. He was yeah. going for a jog, yeah. man. Like <laughs> right. I don't even like to run, but I respect people who do run to take yeah. care of themselves. And right. this man chose to run and go on that jog and run through a neighborhood, minding his business, minding his business, not causing Definitely. trouble. And these men took it upon themselves to fuck themselves and make so. a citizen's arrest yeah. so well they they they, tr they quote unquote said they try to detain him that's why two of the guys are being held with unlawful detainment or whatever yeah. like damn near kidnapping pretty yeah. much yeah uh and to, and to be clear uh the it was in brunswick uh glenn county georgia and so mm. yeah it's a rural you know suburban community not yeah. you know not a or i want to be in georgia so. that's for sure yeah that's for your sure. take man I'm just sad for what went down for uh, Ahmad. Um, Glenn County is an unincorporated township. And yeah. so 
I imagine that out there you don't have the representation that you might have in one of like a a black center like Atlanta yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly, or Birmingham, like yeah. all those those hot spots in the South. And so to me, it's just sad that this kid, I mean, 25, but still a young adult, wasn't able to live out his full potential. And Dude, he's you know, 25. He's a kid. I got a 20 yeah. year old, an 18 year old. He's a kid. Right. 25. Bro. And so that to me is the main thing. Is like you know, justice prevails in this sense, but is is it really? Yeah. You know, it's like is it is it his family? Yeah. They, you can't right. take back what happened. You right. can't give a grieving family justice. Yeah, they're doing in prison. But you can't, you you can't discount. They're gonna be traumatized and triggered for the rest of their lives. What's right. watching another person? Not even watching. What's just even knowing another person is sitting in jail for ending your dear family member's life? What's that really do for you? Like even if they, Not so so thing. so he's in jail. What's what's okay? So what about my son though? Yeah. Definitely. Not a damn. What about Definitely. my kid? What about my nephew? And my uh, cousin. I mean, unfortunately, I don't really have much better news because. Uh, Next, I kind of want to talk about the whole Young Dolph situation. Um, for those of you guys that don't know, Young Dolph is a rapper out of Memphis, Tennessee. Um, influential rapper. Uh, these last couple of years, he really started to come into his own. Definitely. Um, had his own record label and, and etc. But two weeks ago, he was in town in Memphis for uh, for Thanksgiving, yep. he's handing out turkeys. Um, went to his local high school. I think he donated thirty thousand. I think it was, yeah. which you Laid know, it down. Yeah, Ooh. exactly. He's, he's donating. He's giving back. Um, decided that maybe he was gonna stop and grab his mom some cookies on the way to her house, and was gunned down um, in the city. And today, uh, he ended up being laid to rest. And they did his final ride through Memphis and. Finally laid to rest, and uh, I, I'm a big Dolph fan. I don't know about you guys. I'm a I'm a huge hey, Dolph fan. Hey, I ain't gonna fan. lie. You kind of put me on the Dolph, man. You, or more, I knew about Dolph, but I uh, you kind of got me actually liking his music because his music goes really well in the gym. Uh, I'm put, saying it's 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 yeah. turned up. It's inspirational stuff, and and I don't want to necessarily say that you know Dolph didn't have his problems because he had to do certain things potentially to get himself to a level where he was able to give back yeah. to his We're community. Human, but that's the story right. of a black man in America, man. You gotta right. get it out the mud most of the time, right. man. You gotta do what you gotta do, take those risks. But his music definitely is inspirational. It's the type of music that makes yeah. you wanna go to the gym. It makes yeah. you wanna, It makes those you know, weights a little lighter. Listen, listen to that Dolph and the weights get lighter, man. Definitely. My sons put me on the dope. They put me on the music <laughs> yeah, all the time. Bro, he's yeah. a good time. You know, so I, I was time. really enjoying seeing his rise and hearing about what he was doing for the community, giving yep. back and all those things. This is a tragedy that a senseless act. Right, that you could just be him. you could just be on the way home. Yeah. Or you could just be you could be driving in your own city and your mom could give you a call and be like, Hey, could you go grab me some cookies from Martha's? It's right down the street. Yeah. And then you go stop by, and that's the last thing you ever do. And that was you don't get you know, that phone call back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so yeah, that's tough. It's man. a tragedy. Um, R.P. Young Dolph. He uh, definitely will be missed in the hip hop community no and doubt. the Memphis and the world community in general. Cause yeah. great guy and and didn't quite get to start doing he was what he was just, just getting started, started man. man. He was just he was on percolate. the cusp. Right. I'll say this though. Let's stop. Let's stop hating each other and actually holding that deep resentment that really is a reflection of something inside ourselves Definitely. that we know we're missing and then projecting it onto others. Exactly. Sometimes that's with words, sometimes with how, it's how we treat people. A lot of times it's with how we, with bullets. Yep. It's, it's really the jealousy, it's the resentment. He was doing what you would like to do. He's moving how you wish you were moving. He doesn't care about what others think like you, like you do. Cut that out. Yeah. Instead, use these people who are in better positions than you because of what they did as inspiration and fuel to propel you forward because young Dolph's an inspiration if you see how he did yeah. it you see the paper of empire how he moved forward with his people and put his people on and yep. taught him how to move correctly man you should have really learned from that rather than just deciding to take that man's life right yeah, and instead there's, nothing, there's a lesson in that and there's nothing wrong with telling your brother man i love you man i want to see you prosper like for sure we need to get rid of those old tropes of, man i'm too hard to, to, to show emotion right we're right. human beings right you see somebody with beautiful hair you want to rip it out cut that out man yeah instead right. ask them how'd you get your hair to grow instead of asking them let me rip that out 
And on the on the flip side too, um, Memphis is having a tough year this year. I think they had like 280 murders. They have more murders in the city of Memphis than LA, and the population is like one eighth of Sheesh. LA's. So be cool out there, Memphis, for real. Definitely. We love y'all. City of Memphis is beautiful. I don't know if you guys ever been. My mom's from Memphis, been. man. Great the, the Pendleton. Town. Shout yeah. out to Pendleton, for real. Great town, but man, please. Go to therapy. Put the guns down. Yeah, put the guns down. Relax out there. It's not going to get easier because I got another mm. bad news <laughs> segment to go into. Um, rest in peace to the god, the legend, Virgil Abloh, um, head designer and owner of Off-White. Yep. If you don't know, he also was the uh, first black head designer of a uh, top five mm. like, fashion house. Mm. He uh, was the top head designer of Louis Vuitton. Mm. And Ooh. major key in the black community as far as creativity goes and where you can bring your brand. He uh, unfortunately passed away yesterday. Yeah, Passed away yesterday. Um, he was diagnosed in 2019 with a very rare aggressive form of cancer, uh, cardiac, Angiar sarcoma, pardon me if I uh, mispronounce that, but he was diagnosed in 2019 and then unfortunately he lost his battle with cancer yesterday. 41 years old, way too young to be gone. And he, yeah. decided to, he decided to keep it uh, private like Chadwick. And so yep. it's another one of those scenarios mm -hmm. where people kind of didn't Doom. know. Like Doom. What was gonna happen. Yeah, and same with MF Doom yep. too, where it's yeah. like you didn't even know. And then all of a sudden one day it just comes out and you're yeah. like, dang, like I thought that this person was yeah, All man. good. Yep. And same with MF Doom. MF Doom yeah. was having a resurgence. Yeah, I know. And then you got, same with uh, Virgil. He was yeah, just starting to man. really... Man, get his running legs yeah, on him. exactly. Man. He was an inspiration to me as a sneakerhead. I'm sure you, you understand. Sneakerhead, man. Like, to see Definitely. him take the off-white label and remix J's and remix Nike's, which are resale value is crazy, right. to, to, to being the first black man that had... A classic staple like Louis Vuitton. That's yeah. that's that's inspirational. That's man. moves right that's there. That's inspirational. Like, if you don't take nothing else from him, man, he's an inspiration. And go for your dreams. And and say what you want about Virgil because there's been a lot of back and forth. Yeah. Lately, and like some people are like, oh, you know, up until you know prior to his his uh, his death or before his death, nobody was really people were kind of clowning on Virgil, saying yeah, it was yeah. a little stale and stuff. <laughs> but I think now people are kind of realizing like, well, since you're never gonna have that again. Right. And you're gonna really appreciate that. You can and never so, dip back into that man's mind again about his right. creativity. His so type of moves. Appreciate what you got when you got it. Yeah. yeah. You know his I mean? type of moves were the. Why didn't I think of that? You put quotation yeah. marks and logo. Right. Yeah. Like, you, you think you would. That's such a simple idea, but yet it was Virgil who did it, yeah. not anybody else. Right. It was him who yeah. decided to do the undone. Uh, half sewn together type of situation. Yep. Not nobody else. So right. we can be like, oh, well, that's easy, but nobody else thought of it but Virgil, and nobody did it on the level Virgil did nah. do it. It's you just gotta... sad that he's getting his flowers after he's passing. And to be uh, specific, just so y'all know, Louis Vuitton was founded in 1854. For real. They was whipping cats school. back then. Just real old school. Keep that in mind. Yeah, <laughs> man. That 1854. Was... Um, but yeah, I just want to get out of the, the, the dark fog real yeah, quick yeah, and we'll no talk doubt, about no something a little bit more jovial. Um, as far as local shows coming up, I got a couple really good ones that I kind of want to share with y'all and I'll, I'll keep it quick. But uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Night Church is back on. All my Minneapolis folks that, that hang out, especially my Southsiders, but Northsiders, everyone included. You Go guys ahead. are all, all welcome. <laughs> uh, Night Church with Keep Millions and DJ Espada is back on at Ice House every Sunday. Um, you can go there. 21 plus, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, but the uh, the uh, door is only five bucks. So, if you want to come, come have a good time. I think it's ten dollars at the actual door, but you can pay five in advance. I saw five piece in advance, huh? Question. Yeah. Ooh, mask, vax cards. No vax card, but you need mask for okay. entry. Once you're in, you don't need to wear your Got mask. It. They're kind of going with the with the city and CDC guidelines. Got it. Got it. Um, great, great dance party though, and that happens every Sunday. I would highly recommend it for people that don't really have anything going on. Especially if you got Monday off. 
Exactly. <laughs> be be, be careful with for those sure. Mondays on. Uh, <laughs> past night churches, you know, you might be paying for it that Monday if you got to get up and do Word. something. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Uh, be next, mindful. Next, I wanted to talk about uh, Lady Midnight. Awesome artist. Um, they just recently released their debut album, Death Before Morning, and they'll be holding a... Uh, kind of release party of sorts at Ice House, December 23rd, 8 p.m. That'll be 25 bucks at the door, but you will get every dollar's worth because I promise you Lady Midnight is an awesome artist. I, I gotta put you two on. I'm the music yeah. guy. Educate so I, I me on Lady Midnight. I've, I've, heard heard her, I've heard her I've name. Heard her. It's, two days before, before, it's two days before Christmas, so I don't know if we'll all be able to make it, but we oh, should definitely like try to. That, that sounds like, like a good night. That sounds like we definitely gonna make yeah, it, yeah. sir. I'm saying. Black Forest mm. podcast in the building. I'm with it. Yeah. I'm saying. And then uh, last but not least, uh, Black Market Brass, uh, Dania Drum and Dance, and then Dualu Soul Collective will be at Ice House, or no, excuse me, 7th Street Entry on December 11th. Classic That's a venue. Saturday. So, yeah, yeah. 7th Street Entry. Nice and tight, one. too. Yeah. Nice yep. and tight. Like, you're yep. going to be in there dancing. Yeah. You're going to be feeling the vibes, man. Yeah, if you, if, if, and if you live in Minneapolis, if you lived here for any more than a year or two, well, not the last year or two, but you probably you probably <laughs> been to 7th Street, yeah, pre-pandemic, and so great time. Black Market Brass has good music as well, and then I've never uh, they play brass instruments, is what it sounds like. Yeah? <laughs> I've never been to the drum and dance though, and okay. mm. and usually when they do like they used to do Pizza Luce Black yeah, Party, drum and bass, yeah, yeah, and those used to be dope because they yeah. would break it down and yeah. everyone mm. starts dancing. Percussion, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, Mm -hmm. It's lit. It's a good time. So yeah. I would highly recommend you go to that show as well. Like the I house said, that Prince built. Saturday, like call it. December, <laughs> December 11th at uh, 9 p.m. That show is 18 plus though. Yeah. So if you do plan on going, you got to be 18. And then also at First Ave, you definitely have to have um, either a Vax card or you need to have a clean or a negative test within 72, 72 hours, hours of yeah. the event. Yep. You can so, even bring yeah. a, a, a rapid test too uh, yep. with you, yep. and they'll test you right on site too yep. if you, if you uh, need to do that as well. So you got very, few very, very important information to yes. have. On Definitely, shows. Absolutely. you need to know the ins and out in this new normal in the pandemic era. So it's how I, know. I mean, it's getting tough. It's, it's like, yeah. man, last week me and uh, Phil went to a show. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's Larry right. June. Yeah, last week we went to Larry June. Shout out Larry. Hey, 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 hey. Doing hey. numbers. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, last week on Larry. <laughs> we were at Larry at Varsity Theater. I got a little sauce, sauce. Um, it was all right, though. You know what I mean? Phil was holding me down. Like, yes, you know? I was. <laughs> so, so did you have yes, too much I beer was. for the beer or you had the other <laughs> sauce? I was drinking a little bit too much before we even got there. Man. I was turned up before we oh, even man. got there. We, we, little... we were sitting over at the spot at Mac, so. <laughs> right. Hey, sir, sir, things went on a precipitous decline. It's okay, though, man. It's no, all man, good. Man, things no, went I, good. I was up here oh, and then I was like, I did one of these. He so did a wavy situation. You wide waves. <laughs> it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was a great time. Greg caught waves way. like like sand beaches. Okay? I'll put it that way. <laughs> All right, but yeah. I didn't get in no trouble. It was yeah, a great yeah. time. Good time. Um, good clean fun. Good clean fun. It was up front. Nobody could say nothing to him. He was, yeah. we was all in the back. Like, it was like six, seven of us. We all Coming back out, here. It was a real vibe. It <laughs> was in the front like <laughs> Vibing <this>. up, man. <laughs> Vibing up, bro. I'm telling you, this dude was in the front like. Get Watch that my man's, bro. That energy. <laughs> See, when it comes to shows, there's there's a few different type of people. Yeah, there's yeah, there's no the doubt. guys who know all the words and doing their thing. There's the cats who just be dancing and vibing. And then there's the guys who be like me. Me, I stay in my lane. So I just like to go to the show and watch my favorite oh, artists do what they love to do. And I like to observe them. I like to listen to what they're saying. I like to feel the energy wash over me like a current. It's nice. Other folks, you know, they like doing other stuff. And I support that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just support me when I'm at the show. I might not be no doing all the jig moves, doing the juke wop, bing bows. Why you got to make it I'm, sound like that? I'm feeling it, okay? <laughs> I'm feeling the waves crash over me. And you can't uh, stop them waves, This motherfucker man. just said jig. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we went back into the old time. You can't Mexico stop the waves, bro. What century are you in? <laughs> what century I need to be in, sir? I love for you, though, man. Real, that boy said <laughs> big. So, uh, Phil, what you got for us, man? What you well, want to talk about? Uh, what you going to rap about? Morsels of information and tidbits I have for us to discuss today. Well, essentially, my first is, uh, well, earlier this week, just living life, uh, I happened upon a conversation about a uh, individual speaking on 
uh, this it was a it was a lady. Um, she was saying she was dumbfounded on how men have t tend to have clear skin. We all we tend you know have pretty decent skin, and she's saying that based off not, the fact not that not all men, but yeah, uh, you, you know what I mean. In a general basis, not all men. You know we all struggle with our own issues that we uh, choose seek to overcome. But the basis of it was she was stating how like how do you guys keep my skin with zero skin routine? I said. You're wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Self care is important to me, and Definitely. being mindful of what you uh, use on your body, as I've gotten older, I've realized has been very uh, crucial and important just to just maintain and take care of yourself and love yourself, because I believe in loving yourself. Gotcha. You. Okay. Gotcha. And so she asked, like, well, w w okay, so what do you do? I'm like, well, I have this, I, I have a face, and when it comes to the face specifically, we just speak about our skin routines as far as our whole body later on, but as far as the face goes, <laughs> 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 yes, sir. <laughs> and as far as her face goes, um, we, you know, I, I, I have something that I use to uh, just, you know, maintain the health and integrity of my skin on my face. And what is and that, sir? What I like to use is um, I like to use black uh, cocoa and charcoal soap. So oh, black African charcoal, uh, charcoal soap. Yep. Look crazy soap. in the in the water too. Yeah, yeah. bro. You've yeah. been over my house. You see those black soap bars in my uh, soap dish? Oh, yeah. I was using that shit too. Okay, you was using it to wash your hands. It was feeling good. No, I was. It was. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. <laughs> that, so that wasn't my hair that I saw sticking out from it. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, man. yeah. So I use a good char activated charcoal black cocoa uh, 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 soap bar of soap. I, I get it from the site called Rituals.mn or RitualsMN.com. Uh, uh, this beautiful lady, awesome lady, uh, makes these makes soaps, and uh, this is kind of what she does, and this is who I buy from. I buy from her for years. I'll, I'll bring her soaps on one of these days and really break down some of my favorite scents, uh, just to show you what the work she does, because it's really good work, and I just I fucking love it. Black owned. Uh, black owned. There we go. A black woman touches my soap. There we therefore, go. every day a black woman touches my face to make sure my skin does what it needs definitely, to do. Definitely. And so I say that all that to say. Well, gentlemen, what do you do for your facial care routine? So I have a thing I call self-care Sundays, mm. where mm. I do a bath with some candles. I get some soft music going, usually jazz, Coltrane, or Mingus. Marvin Gaye even? Sometimes Marvin, but uh, I like to have no words teddy, on my self-care Sundays. Mm -hmm. Little no words. Little TP? It's, 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 I want to go inward in the mind. Gotcha. So I, I play a lot of jazz, yeah, yeah. like some incense. When I get out, I do my little, while I'm in there, actually, I do my little moisturize. Uh, and then after I get out, I put on a clay mask. I oh shout out to the clay mask. I clay mask. My I got face. a clay mask too. See, bro. I need yeah. to like y'all, bro. Like I don't, I don't, you know, I'm 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 straight Irish Spring in this motherfucker. Yeah, we need to get you off that Irish yeah, Spring. Yeah, hey, hold yeah, on, yeah, hold yeah, on, hold yeah. on. We don't gotta, it don't gotta be all like that. Anyway, let me let me let me. But it's what we need to do. It's because we care about you, though. True. I know what I'm getting you for Christmas now. Yeah, yeah, man. There we go. But we go back to my routine. So I do that. I let that sit for about 10, 15 minutes on the face. Take it off, use some face moisturizer. After that, I moisturize and do a beard mask. I make mm. my own. Mm. So anybody out there want to know mm. how to get your beard right, hit up. You do got the... I mean, OG beard gang, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you, you want to know, send me, send me a DM, send it to the Black Podcast, the Black Brewers Podcast. I'll answer all your questions. And I also... Speaking of, if you would like to see a self-care Sunday of all three of us putting on face masks and taking care of ourselves, let us know. We'll either live stream it uh, where you can participate and talk with us and hang out with us, or we'll do something of a recorded nature. Yeah, Please, yeah. Uh, just comment. Let us know love if this is something man. you would like to see. Love we would love to do it. Yeah. All, all three of us. Yeah, we'll get that going. As long as we get them yeah. up Irish Spring. Yeah, yeah. No Irish Spring. <laughs> no Irish Spring, brother. It's going to be Stop black that. goodness. Uh, Stop that. Okay? <laughs> all right, what about yourself? I just told you. That that's the, that's see, the end of it? We're doing Irish Spring bars to the face. Bro, we, we, you might as well splash cold fam. water on your face anymore. <laughs> Call it a day. Okay. Yeah, We're going to have to no, but no, we that. Don't don't really, <laughs> we definitely using, you know, lotion, uh, lotions and moisturizers and stuff nice. like that. Lotion for your face or just lotion? Do you use the same lotion on your face as you use on no, your body? No, 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 sir. All right, cool. Um, yeah, that's right. That's right. yeah that's right. come on, chill out. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but no. Well, you said Irish Spring, sir. <laughs> you did say no, Irish Spring. Irish Spring is the soap. So why would I be surprised that you use the lotion on your body on your face? I mean, hold on. Irish Spring is like... Crack off vodka. That's like low bar. Word. <laughs> he said word. Anyway. I'm, I'm done. All right. Yeah. Phil, <laughs> let's get into <laughs> what you got next for us. Sheesh. Well, this what one, I have this next. Is, this isn't going on YouTube, is it? Yes, it is. It's so. going on YouTube, bro. To yes. you. Stay tuned. <laughs> God damn. Anyway. Well, nice segue. I, I bring this 
to say, um, so in the workplace, being who we are, looking like how we look, yeah. okay. luscious, bearded, three shades black, heavily melanated, our presence and Hair. our aura and energy is felt whether we choose to turn it on or not. So true. In the workplace, we tend to have uh, a good time because we create we create the situations we choose to thrive in, but with also, unfortunately, uh, uninvited energies and people and their uh, low vibration mindsets come into our day. So, my question is, um, basically, how do you conduct yourself uh, under these circumstances where a negative guest or customer comes in, right? And they're kind of hitting you with these microaggressions. Yeah. You know, they're, they're or, or they're just talking ignorant, or they're just saying, my brother, or pulling moves of the, hey, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> thanks, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't know, they hit you with the, thanks, brother. <laughs> like, what are those, or oh, anything of that nature, man. Anybody who knows, who, who's, do if, if you us, or even if you've even worked with uh, POC people, y'all know what we're talking about. Y'all yeah. get it? You understand the, the, the level of ignorance we uh, tend to kind of bob and weave or at least try our best to do. Yeah. So I, I like to just ask, like, how do you handle yourself amongst these micro uh, microaggressions and uh, uh, how do you protect your integrity uh, uh, during these situations? I, I'm curious to see how you guys go about doing that on your day-to-day -day work I life. mean, personally, <laughs> when I, it's far and few between that happens to me, I can honestly say, because I honestly I think uh, having this, this skin color <laughs> prevent some people from coming at you in a certain way is it's that double edged it's the double consciousness right, right. two edged sword like you're thought of as aggressive but then in, in every in other very way but when it comes to those environments people don't really try to test you mm. generally speaking well, of course on like a face to face yeah yeah, yeah. Generally. but yeah, 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 when those when those things do happen i personally i refuse to serve them I, i'll get one of my coworkers you deal with this person. I, I, I have, I'm 43 years old, man. I have no tolerance <laughs> anymore for that. None whatsoever. I let my job know yeah. from the interview on. I will not deal with tomfoolery from these folks. I've only had one person actually get like disrespectful with something like that uh, with me. And I did the same thing that you were just saying. I had a coworker of mine yep. handle, uh, or actually at the time it was my, my manager, yeah. my boss at the time. And I had, uh, them come in and handle the situation. Yep. Uh, this person was super intoxicated and had to get removed from mm -hmm. the bar. But yeah, it's few and far between um, for me as well. I don't, I don't see that happening a ton, quite so much anymore. When yeah. I first started working in the beer industry and especially uh, doing events and stuff, yeah. um, you know, you go out to these far off places and stuff and. And I don't want to necessarily sound like Duluth is like a far off place, but it's last time I was in Duluth, some, some lady tried to grab my hair. And oh, so, yeah, I heard about and it. I, had, I heard about and it. Somebody, I'm not going to say I'm not gonna say who it was. I'm not going to say their name, but they had to literally get in front of this person to be like, like, stop, like, don't. And, and you know, and so you go to places like that. I do get some weird, like, sexual comments and stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah. what you talking about? One yeah. time. <laughs> One time I'm saying, and this is cool to a certain extent, but a lot of a lot of people can cross the line with this, men mm -hmm. and women. Um, but yeah, like I had a, a a woman tell me that I was her sexy count chocula. That's a hat remover right there. Yeah, this is at the bar, like at the bar while I was working. You know what I mean? And so it's. That's the kind of thing that right. takes you maybe a couple of days to right. process. See, the thing that people don't understand is people hit you with these things. Also, like, Count Chocula, like, I'm like, what? So Count Chocula ain't even black. <laughs> Very but, true. But the, That's the, an astute observation. But the point is, right? <laughs> he got <people>, one tooth. <laughs> the point is, though, right, you get hit with this, right? And so they get to go home and not have to deal with it. We have to deal with that. Yeah, bro, that happened, like, almost eight months ago. Or that happened, yeah, at... Eight to twelve months ago, yeah, but you I'm still have I'm to still deal with it. Yeah. I bet if, if I bet if I brought that up to her, she probably wouldn't even remember. No, it. no, exactly. no, and that's the no, thing. Like, don't ever right. refer to a person of color as They're chocolate colored. or food. I don't see color. We are not food. We <laughs> not, are not a color. A we are people. Imagine if I went up to my uh, paler skin homie and said, "Hey, man, that tortilla skin looking real good, bro." Yeah. I love the way that uncooked white bread is looking on you. We might do. My guy. Hey, I love that muffin 
toned skin you got today, brother. That mayonnaise looking complexion. Real edible. Yeah, that mayonnaise complexion. Hey, that egg white, white, uh, white. Egg wash. Well, yeah. That you egg do? wash upon the dough looking tan you got <laughs> after dough. you went to the beach. Looks yeah. great, sir. Yeah, it's that's like, fine. That's, that's you, fine. Do you, do you get it? That's fine. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm with you on that one. Like, yeah. Um, Sometimes, like, I, was just, I was just saying that it's not always like rude, like, 50 year old like dudes from the suburbs or some shit like 50 year old like white dudes from the suburbs it's 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 a wide range it's of a wide range that, like, it cuts across crazy. Crazy. yeah yeah, yeah. like i've had i've had a lot of women times speak to me crazy ladies talk, talk i've had crazy. men talk to me crazy uh, but yeah. generally speaking for me it's women that like yeah, come yeah, up yeah. And, yes. and say some crazy crazy that's and possibly some like sexual that's the fetishization though right that's too, the fetishization if the shoe was on the other foot is what you got to ask yeah, sometimes like, you really bro, do got to observe it through that lens sometimes just, you know man. it's it's a sad thing that our skin is fetishized it is and I don't really want to go too much more into it but it's right. it's it's, 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 yeah, it's, we it's can. don't do that man I am not a spade to be queened first off go. we'll leave it this oh, at that. <laughs> Don't touch my be, hair. I know what you be watching. Yeah, you know what I be watching? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm done with Phil. You right got to ask Anthony <laughs> about right? that one. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't do that like this. So what we got, what we got next? Uh, mm-hmm. I just want to check on y'all on your mental health before we get out of here, you know. Work. Mental health check-in. How, how have you been feeling since Thanksgiving? And how was your Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving was great. Um, my mom, like I mentioned in the, in the last podcast, just moved to... North Carolina. I got that wrong North on the Kaka-Laki. last one. <laughs> um, yeah, she's in North Carolina again, still sending me palm trees. She's still at the beach. <laughs> We're over cool. here eating Thanksgiving dinner. Great time. Ain't got to visit to with. a palm tree in the, in the, in the wintertime. Mm-hmm. Like, man, right. why, you, why you teasing me like that? Right. Anyway. <laughs> but we, had a, we had a good time. My brother, uh, my girlfriend Vicky, um, hanging out with his wife and two kids. And we had a great time. My niece and nephew, you know, had a, had a good time. This food, though, Made baked. Hold on, and I told. Did I tell you about this? You told me. Educate me. Did I t- oh you told man, me about it this fool. My mom uh, has a great recipe for baked uh, macaroni and cheese. The good old classic. Oh, black, you did tell recipe. me about this. Layered macaroni and cheese. <sighs> this fool. My mom had the recipe. She she did not put salt and pepper on the recipe. This fool stayed true to the recipe. Left out the salt and pepper. Can we get a moment of silence for no salt pepper on the macaroni and cheese? I'm saying, and we ended up having to individually salt and pepper the shit, and so DIY mac and cheese should not be a thing, especially yeah. on Thanksgiving. I was, I was season your food. But, hey, everybody, but it was season good. your food. Yeah, but it was good though. I will say it did come through. After Every, the DIY, everything came together. <laughs> We were just, it's Thanksgiving, bro. We were just happy to be there with each other. Right, right. I, I, would, I would be too. I would find happiness in that as well. How was your Thanksgiving, Phil? How my my Thanksgiving help, was hearty. It was good. It was a nice little party. I got my family together. I got to kick it with my nephews. I haven't That's seen my nephews sad. in a while, there man. You go. My dope. nephew, Nassan, and uh, my other little nephew, man, just, just, hey, just watching him play with the dog. And it was just great, man. Just being an uncle is really cool to me. It's new. I'm not exactly the best at being an uncle, but. I'm a young uncle, so you know, young uncle, so you know. Hey, I like. Hey, I've yeah. never heard of you. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, that's so, me. You know, uh, I, I, I think I at I'm least like to think that your nephews <laughs> listen to you a little bit more than your dad because of the fact that your uncle, and you're not yeah. the one up in their ear all the time. Definitely. So I just try to. I low key like to drop game on my little cousins and That's nephews because to do. it's really what you're supposed to do. Yeah. But then again, I feel like I'm coming off like old head, too eager. Like, hey, hey, look, little young head, what you gotta do yeah, here? You don't, don't, don't want to come off too. No, but you man. said it, right? Yeah, yeah you yeah. said it. They, but they I can just hear like, it better from you than they, from their dad. Knowing that, yeah, you kind of take the opportunity to kind of just whisper some little shit up in their ear to make sure they Sprinkle they a little game yeah, on little, little 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 game flakes, man. You know, hit them with the flavor real quick because you know a lot of times what they do keep isn't necessarily what you expect them to keep. So just you know. Keep talking positive and be mindful of what you say to them because they a lot of times will retain a lot more than what you realize and not sure. exactly what you expect them to retain. Yeah, that's big facts. That's, so that's uh, big just, facts. you know, be mindful of what you say to your, your kin folk like that, especially yeah. the ones that do look up to you and listen to you. My for Thanksgiving sure. was amazing. Yeah, how, how, how was yours? The right? OG, oh, man, the OG came in from town, back from Illinois. Uh, we had the traditional turkey. Was OG, OG mama. Yeah, but I call my mama OG, OG, you. triple OG. Got you, mm, got she's you. the OG. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we had the traditional, uh, the traditional Thanksgiving, you know. We also did a seafood boil. 
Ooh. We're about to this earlier. We did yeah, the seafood Yeah, boil. you mentioned Delicious. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had Delish. crawfish, crab, mm. uh, all the accompaniments, andouille sausage. But there was one thing that was a little weird that threw me off. My brother, my sister's boyfriend, I call him my brother, he put baby carrots in the seafood bowl. I'm okay with carrots. Yeah, yeah. What's wrong with that? When have you ever seen baby carrots in a seafood boil? Sliced? It helps your vision. When have you ever seen a seafood boil with carrots? Were they sliced? No, the little baby carrots. The whole, whole. The whole little baby carrots. Little bees. Yeah. Now, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm, I'm not saying it wasn't good. It was fire. But we clowned him all night about it. I mean, he deserved to get clowned. I mean, because I was like, man, look, is this pot roast? What are we doing? Out of yeah. the huge, out of the huge. And also, we had my nephews and nieces there. My niece's birthday was the day before, so we celebrated with her. My son took way too many edibles. <laughs> Some slump, slump, huh? You know the little 500 pack, right? The, mm -hmm. little, the little pack of the, the little gusher like things, right? This man took the whole pack. How you we doing? asked him, <laughs> I said, how you feeling? My sister asked him, how you feeling? What, how many did you eat? He's like, the whole pack. We're all like, whoa, it's 500 milligrams. Oh, man. But at two hours in, he like this. Sleep slumped. on the couch. Slumped. Speaking Bro. of pressure, mm. man, actually, I got one more for y'all. Yeah. So uh, as far as pressure goes, when you're at work, it's crazy busy. Yeah. Right? Things are going. You probably could have went for another staff member on staff. But you know, hey, that's just the way the cookie crumbles today. So let's go ahead and handle it. Unexpected uppercut. How are you when you handle that? How, how, how do you, yeah, how do you handle yourself under the Personally, pressure? Personally, man, I, 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 I work great in the picture. I used yeah. to manage stores. So I, I work great in that environment. I don't stop. I just keep moving. Yeah. Right. Keep that line moving. Right. Because it, eventually it's going to die down. Right. Then you can yes. take that breathing. Thank you. Definitely. You know, so I agree with you. You got to right. keep you stay on your toes. That's your retail background. And yeah. I used to work in retail, too. Yeah. I, I, at 16, I worked a, a Black Friday at Toys R Us. Woo-hoo! Um, Woo-hoo! Uh, four or five years My ago, God. I was working at a liquor store, popular liquor the store in Minneapolis. <laughs> yeah. The thing danger. Yeah, and that, around Christmas time, would be the same way, like yeah. line wrapped all the way around the, the store. Building. And sometimes when it gets super hectic and you there's nothing you can do about yeah. how how hectic it's been, yeah. you can ju you just put your head down, yep. just start grinding it out. And then you know it doesn't help to to get to get bent out of shape no. or nothing like that because mm -hmm. then that affects your team. Yep. Yeah, that starts to affect like your customer yep. interface and yep. stuff. And so, so my 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 best thing that I do is just I just put my head down and then just get through it and then just you know hour go by and then you should you know you should be good. I'm with you on How that you one, man. It? As far as me, like being that I've been working the industry, the uh, restaurant industry, bartending, uh, serving, bussing. Prep cooking, all of that, man. I've been doing. I've been doing. I do this, I, and I'm a vet doing this since I was 16. And I die for it. No, I, don't know all that. Right. I don't know. I'm all just playing. That, bro. I'm just playing. Go We're ahead. gonna ascend. Go ahead. Anywho, <laughs> we're not with angel wings. <laughs> we're gonna ascend from it. But you know, when things just get extra brazy, just stuff starts going nuts, and you just kind of get a little, a uh, little too wop to the booty. Uh, you know, yeah, you just. You, you, you take a deep breath, you keep your cool, and you bust yeah, it out, man. Definitely. You know, you, you, you know, when your coworkers come in from the new shift, go ahead and holler at them. Say what's up. Like, I get, you know, sometimes people want to just, you want to walk into uh, work. You see the person walking into work, and you want to just like, dishes now. Like, nah. Tell them what's up. Yeah. It's actually a good way to center you as well, as well as it keeps them uh, knowing like, hey, it's okay. We got this. The line's going to be there. That's okay, man. Customers yep. see that too at yeah. the bar too. They see yep. that love, they that energy. Yeah. Right, and when your and energy, feed off that. Yeah. when your energy Definitely. is off and it's like all flustered because it's busy, like it, that projects and that rubs off on your other teammates. Like Greg was saying, like so instead you can keep an even level, cool head. Understand that that's the mess that's just gonna be there until you get done with it, until they leave, and you could just go ahead and have a good time with your squad right. and, and make the best of it. Out of it. Also, it's a dollar situation. Ooh. And we are all here, especially if you're in the industry, we are all here for dollar situations, okay? And this time of year is the time of year for dollar situations. So embrace those busy days, expect them to come, and I guarantee you, you're going to have a much shorter, faster, right. efficient, fun day. I don't, want, I don't want to see you complaining come, come January, February when it's slow. Right, because you're because you're gonna have had made some yeah, money yeah, yeah, during the dollar situations. Exactly. Be man. mindful. Dollar situations don't last grind, forever, though. Grind yeah. when you can. Yeah. Yep. Sure. Grind well, it out. Grind when you. I can. think that's a good way to say, gentlemen. Cheers. 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 
I'm Catch Phillip. you on the next one. Drink more water, meditate, and take a deep breath. Only do what you can control. No doubt. No Shouts doubt. out Dangerous Man. Shouts out our writer. Anthony. That's good. He already said. <laughs> Slanguish God. <laughs> Love y'all. <laughs>